Hey, hello, 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 hello. Hi, um, I am Suze and I thought I would make these videos about economics because as you probably know, it's quite a lot happening or not happening in the old economy right now. And it feels to me like a lot of debates about economics haven't really taken into account how much the world has changed. So I thought I'd make these videos to open up the debate a little bit. If you're feeling confused, or haven't really been able to engage with economics, perhaps these will help you get some clarity or perhaps they'll make you more confused, um, who's to say? Anyway, let's just start, shall we? Shall we? Yeah, let's, let's go. So my first uh, topic is trade, something that is pretty important, and I'm gonna be looking at, look at imports and exports, and how we add those up into the current account balance. And I'm also going to be looking at some data from Britain, which will be interesting to other people, not just British people, because of the sort of things that we're exporting and importing, I would think. And also I'm covering Brexit a tiny bit in terms of that. That's further on though, about 10 minutes in. I think I haven't really timed it yet. So um, that that's, you can skip to that bit. I mean, that's a bit vague, wasn't it? Anyway, let's, um, let's, let's start. And the first way I like to start by thinking about trade is by you looking around your stuff and thinking how did you trade it into your life so i'd like you to do that just look around what you've got where did it come from how did it get here so if i look around my desk i've got a banana it's pretty where are you from mate it's pretty clear where that comes from i've got quite a lot of pens um white pens uh this i like these ones sharpies probably i think they're from mid america uh it's german pens very good I've got quite a few japanese pens pilot pens and look I've got this and this and look i've got these ones as well this one is also from japan these are my favorite pens actually here also from japan and what else i've got another sharpie i like these got quite a lot of these and, and that and um yeah also also made, made, I think also made in japan this tweezers don't really want those, but yeah, that, I have not had that pen. That one, really nice, that pen, really, really decent, really decent pen, that one. Once you start looking, you'll find it's pretty easy to get information about where our pens come from. It's really hard to find out anything much about how our laptops and phones were made. And I find it a bit weird that we can have fair trade bananas, but we can't have fair trade cobalt. Now, fair trade sounds kind of nice, but shouldn't everything be fair trade, right? Why do we have to specify it? And if we're going to say we've got a fair trade coffee, shouldn't we then also say when we've got an unfair trade something? So maybe we should use that more. Why don't you, you know, maybe it'll catch on. So I've got an unfair trade laptop, an unfair trade phone, an unfair trade keyboard, unfair trade Kindle, unfair trade saucepan, unfair trade plug, unfair trade plug socket, unfair trade, cheese grater, unfair trade, trainers, unfair trade, fridge. So we've talked about what we import. What do we export? Do you know what our biggest exports are? When I ask British people this, they often say to me, weapons. And it is true that we are the world's second biggest arms dealer. But weapons are actually a small proportion of the things that we actually export. A guy called Paul Holden says that the weapons industry in this country is about the same size as our single-use plastics industry. And we're trying to abolish single-use plastics, right? And, and look, let me be clear. I'm all in favour of cutting back on plastics, right? I'm trying to, in my own life, I got this uh, like eco shampoo, which has no plastic packaging. And it's making my hair really greasy. But I just think we've got our priorities slightly wrong if we're focusing so much on plastics and not at all on abolishing precision bombs, right? Could David Attenborough maybe make a documentary? Would that be the thing that changes all this? Like, honestly, I feel really strongly about this because the weapons trade is only a small proportion of our exports. And yet the damage those weapons do around the world is something that I can't even attempt to put into words. And I just think, how as a nation can we say we care about peace in the Middle East? How can we say that we're exporting democracy to other countries when we're actually exporting weapons and fueling the conflict 
fair. I think it shows our main export isn't really democracy, it's hypocrisy. But what is our main export? We haven't actually covered that yet. Um, do you know? I'll give you a clue. It isn't something produced in a factory. I'm kind of obsessed why all our factories have closed and think quite a lot about what the future of manufacturing is. Uh, these are some of my old holiday photos in the background where I walked around some old factories and took lots of pictures. I went by myself, didn't find any companions on this holiday. Maybe because my dad used to work in a factory that closed, I'm kind of really interested in it, but this isn't what we manufacture now, although I guess you could argue it's something we've manufactured, but it's not a good, it's a service. Do you know what it is? It is, did you get it? It'll kick yourself if you didn't. Financial services, yes. So that is our main export. Closely followed by, and intertwined with as well, other business services. If that seems like a strange thing to explore and you're wondering how it might work, Think of it like it might be something like, for example, a resident of another country, a very wealthy person who uses a British firm to get advice on something financial. So they might want advice, for example, on, I don't know, how to pay more tax. That's what a lot of wealthy people want advice on. And uh, that would count as an export. Now, here maybe it's a very good idea to distinguish between goods and services. And if you look at this picture, you can see that Britain, for example, has a deficit in goods, so we buy a lot more than we sell, but we have a big surplus in services. And of course, finance isn't the only service we sell, but it's a really, really major part, it's our main one. So I should say that trading goods and services is one part of the current account, and this is makes up our overall balance of payments. And our payments to the rest of the world do have to balance. So if we're buying more than we're selling, we have to balance that out by borrowing. So it does all in theory have to balance. So you might look at this picture and say, oh, banking and finance is really important for our economy. We should really encourage and protect it. Or you might say, wow, banking and finance completely dominates our economy. Maybe we should also do something else. But I won't tell you where I stand on that, uh, what my view is. I'll just say that if you are more interested, you can actually go and have a look at the data yourself. And it's for good. It's actually really easy to go onto the Office for National Statistics website. And um, it's really easy. You can just scroll through there and click this website. You can do it on your phone and just get, look, it's really easy. You just like go. So what you can possibly see I'm doing is I'm scrolling through and I'm finding data on these really handy charts of where we get stuff from. So I'm interested in where we get medicine and pharmaceutical stuff from. And you can see it's mostly Europe, 80% Europe. Um, now I'm going to look at fruit and veg. I'm quite into fruit. I love my fruit. And you can see again, not as big a proportion, but quite a lot from, from Europe. They're the countries there that we get it from. And um, that's good now, if you want to get data on the services that we export and import, um, it doesn't have it displayed in quite such a user-friendly way on the on the website. To get the data, what you need to do is you need to go um, go onto Google Maps, and there's, a, there's an unmarked house which you can find in this location. So you need to go to this this road, and you find this unmarked house, and then when you find it. You go down the driveway and you take a sort of left and you'll walk to the end of a path and there'll be a few bushes and a, a big shrub. You go through the shrub and hopefully you'll find a, a, a shed. So if you stand in front of this shed and, oh, it has to be between certain dates. It's between, um, let me remember this right. I should probably check. It's the, yeah, the first of the month and the third of the month. If there's a full moon, and also Neptune is trying Saturn in the sky, I don't know what that means, but I've heard people say this. Basically, that's that's when you can stand in front of the shed, and if you if you think positive thoughts, a cat will come out of the shed, and the cat will give you the information on the services that we export. Uh, now, I'm kind of joking, I maybe just wanted to show you this amazing cat that I met at an Airbnb, and, but basically it's much harder to get data on services, they've just started publishing on the ONS, and it, here it is, it's in a big Excel spreadsheet, um, 
be careful of Excel spreadsheets. You can see this isn't as user friendly as the nice clear drop down tables for goods, but this is you know useful data on services. Um, so why don't we have a look at Japan because Japan is the first country that Britain's got a trade deal with uh, for Brexit. And Japan, we don't export that much to Japan, it's about 2% of our world total of exports. But if you look, well, you probably can't see here, but you can look at it if you want in your own time. But we export mostly to Japan financial services. In fact, we export more financial services to Japan than any other country in Asia. Uh, we export, apart from the US, it's the the country we export the most financial services to outside of Europe. Um, and here's the thing, right? Uh, the categories are a little bit vague of the services that we export. And I would just like to know more about what these financial services are, because uh, you might have seen there's been a lot of press recently, and actually for a long time, of the kind of activities of British banks involved in money laundering. Now, um, of course, not all finance is like that, but it'd be just good to know a little bit more detail about what exactly, what kind of activities are making up these exports. And I have, I'm not aware of any data set that can tell us. Now, I'd just like to point out two things. Uh, two things are both about borders. So thing one is I'd like you to notice how we've often let goods and resources from countries come into this, come across borders, but we've stopped the people from doing the same. So historically that's been resources from gold to oil. Today it ranges from things like cobalt that I've talked about through to clothes. We enable the goods to flow, but we don't let people that are involved in producing them cross a border. So that's thing one. I think two is related. I just again like you to think about what we allow to cross borders. Now, there's increasing scrutiny of people crossing borders, increasing restrictions on people moving freely, and there's becoming, you know, we're we'll seeing what's going to happen with Brexit, but there's more concern that we're not going to be able to get goods coming into our country. But I'd just like you to notice how little attention is paid to how finance moves across borders. Because today, I'd say finance probably can flow freer and quicker than at any point in history, right? So notice how we live in a world where we'll stop people fleeing a war zone, a border, and yet we'll allow finance to flow pretty easily into a tax haven with kind of not that many questions asked. So in this video, I've been talking about trade. I've been talking about how economists measure trade, and I've been talking about something that we call the current account balance, which makes up a broader measure called the balance of payments. Now, notice that both of these terms have the word balance in them. Although I personally don't think things are that balanced in global trade and haven't been for a really long time. So really, the thing I'm gonna leave you with is just to think about the questions I've asked you in this video. I've asked you what your country produces and consumes, what thought you personally produce and consume. And I wonder if you're happy with those answers. I personally am not, right? And I would like to live in a country where we didn't produce things like weapons that destroy life. And instead, what I would like is if we lived in a world where everybody could both consume and produce things, right? When I talk about production, I don't just mean manufacturing things in factories. I mean everything from manufacturing through to music production. And that's really the question I'm going to leave you on, which is how how can we live in a world where everybody has the chance to create things that they feel are going to be useful for humanity? And how do we fairly exchange, trade and share those things with the rest of the world? That, I think, is the ending. Is that a profound question? I think it's a pretty profound question, but obviously, like, you know, if you want to answer it, you can. You don't have to. It's a free, it's a free, um, free world. I mean, not that free for some people. If you're making, if you're mining cobalt, probably not that free. But anyway, I think I've finished the video. This is the ending of my first YouTube video on economics, so I hope you enjoyed it. And um, and yeah, how do we end these things? Is this is this an okay ending? Like, is it finished? I think it's. I think we're done. Okay, thanks. Thank. I mean, I've actually, I've got another. Uh, well, this isn't the pre-end. There's another ending bit that I've already recorded, so you can see that in a minute when I end. Hi. 
thank you so much for watching my first uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it and the hair wasn't too greasy to distract you. Um, if you've got any questions about economics, put them in the comments, that'd be great. And do subscribe, I've got loads to talk about, so I'm going to make loads of these videos. And that's it really, thanks so much.